Hey, Armin here. Welcome to the NSP Nutrition Show, where we cover training, nutrition, supplementation strategies, and a whole lot more. So stand by. Hey, and welcome to the NSP Nutrition Show. I'm Armin Echelbarger. And I'm Frank Mills. And today, Armin and I will be talking about when it is a better choice to train one limb versus both. And we're going to be talking about Vince's lacto-vegetarian diet. So everybody, welcome to the NSP Nutrition Show. Uh, Armin, how are things going today, man? Uh, it's going good, Frank. Things are warming up. Weather's breaking a little bit. Uh, still going to be a little chilly, but uh, yeah, feeling good. That's right. Well, we're down here in Tampa Bay, Florida, and we're going to talk about when it is a better choice to train one limb versus both. Now, I've always wondered this, Armin. You know, I was in the gym the other day, and I was watching this girl, uh, and it, I'm, I apologize. I was true. I was watching this girl. She was working out, and she was on uh, a leg machine doing just one leg. And she did that leg, and then she switched into the other leg. Now, is there any advantage of that? Uh, you know, I mean, I guess maybe what we should get into is to explain what is training one limb over both. Well, that's something that's become very popular from what I'm seeing as well. And I think a lot of trainers are, are promoting it uh, just mm -hmm. to – be different. Um, right. And so basically what you're doing, you're focused on one limb and you take that to whatever rep scheme or take it to failure, whichever, and then you go to the other limb. And there's okay. a lot of things you need, you need to understand about that um, because I've done it and I've done it very extensively. I've done it with clients and there's pluses and minuses to it. So what I wanted to okay. do is, you know, have us clarify more about what you need to understand about doing single limb work <laughs> okay all right so i guess what it comes to is the type of exercises or the things that people are doing can you give us some examples of the type of exercises or the training uh that either maybe gosh you've seen or that is out there right now yeah so like for guys when a real real popular one is just doing one arm rows and you just, you go from, one, you focus on one side, then you switch to the other, and then you take a break, and then you repeat, and you, however many sets you're gonna do. So that's okay. a real, real popular one. Uh, you know, the, the uh, cable machines, you'll see people do like one arm push downs or one arm cable curls. And you'll mm -hmm. see this with dumbbells, people doing one arms. Uh, and some of the machines will allow for unilateral you can work one limb, which is, I think, a great feature. And you'll see those available. Uh, and so what people are doing, they're working that one side, then they switch to the other side, then they take a break. Um, you know, dumbbells are real popular for that as well. So that's what people are doing with it. Right. We want to, I want to, as we progress here, I want to talk about the things you want to be aware of uh, about that type of training. <laughs> Well, is this the type of training that you would recommend all the time? <clears throat> See, that's the thing is, I don't think you should be doing that all the time. I think it's mm -hmm. really good for rehab. If you got a, a weaker area or an area that's been right, injured right. and you need to bring it up. So like for people, if they, you know, let's say they broke their leg, okay, that there's going to be muscle atrophy to let that leg heal because it'll take six to eight weeks depending and mm -hmm. then they need to rework that area so to bring that atrophy back up you know that's what i would do like one-legged leg presses or one-legged squats you know in a, in a real stable manner to help bring the leg up but you still need to do both limbs uh just for keeping things balanced but you would put more emphasis on the one side so it if you're rehabbing or you're bringing up a weaker body part, I think it's very good. I used to do it with my clients all the time. And I'd even do like a really slow tempo, 10 seconds up, 10 seconds down to help with right. activation of as much muscle fiber as possible. So I like it for that. Um, but if you're doing it all the time, I don't, I don't think it's beneficial all the time. And we're going to touch on different reasons for that. But um, that's when I would use it. Okay. 
Now, for the people that are listening and watching, what are some things they should keep in mind when using a single limb, uh, actually versus using both limbs? Well, see, what happens is, is what I see happen in the gym is that people will do mm -hmm. one side of the limb and they're focused on that side. And the purpose of it is to really engage the muscle, work on your, you know, your form and things like that. And I get that. Right. And then they, and then they switch to the other side uh, and then they do it as far as you know, how remember how you, however many reps you're going to do. Now, ironically, mm -hmm. some people tend to do more reps on one side than the other, which I absolutely disagree with 100%. You need to keep balance. And so if one side right. is stronger, don't do more reps just because it's stronger. Okay. Right. That's another thing that people don't take into account because you're still you're getting out of balance. So that's why I like to always train both sides at the same time to keep it balanced. Uh, so, but the thing is, you're trying to maintain that intensity. So one side, you may have really good intensity, but as you do that one side very focused, you're going to fatigue. So the other side won't get as much focus because you're already tired. And so that's what you right. have to kind of, that's what I'm talking about when you're trying to do things balanced. And the other thing to keep in mind when you're just training one limb, it takes a lot longer, you know, so you're spending more time in the gym. And is that what you're right. really looking to do? Because uh, when I train, when I train with clients or other people, that's what I also noticed. It took longer, uh, but at the same time, was it necessary? I guess a fear I would have is, man, my right arm is bigger than my left arm, or the same thing with your leg. You know, I mean, uh, well, if, have if you, you seen you, that before? Again, <laughs> well, that, that's common for people to have one <laughs> one limb, uh, one muscles bigger on one side and another, and that could just be because of. Uh, the right handed, left handed, and things like that. But right, you can, right. I, I have my left arm was smaller than my right arm, my biceps, my arms. So I was able to bring it up by focusing on that, the left side with doing additional work at the end of the workout. But I also okay. train both sides at the same time. So that's, right, that's the way, right. that's the way I would do it. Um, but when we're talking about, um, <laughs> you know, different ways to look at it, right you need to understand what you're trying to accomplish right right well you know it's just not my i i thought of you know an arm or yeah. a leg bigger than the other so it is something well, it that can, can happen it, it, can, it can happen yeah okay all right so armin when do you use it and when do you recommend it to some of the clients you train so like i mentioned before i like to use it for rehab so if somebody's got a really a uh, sensitive knee that's, you know, right, it's an injured right. knee and we got to be really careful with it because the other knee is good. Then I like to isolate that limb to help strengthen it. But then at the end, at the end, I'll also train both sides. So that we're keeping a balance. So I like doing it for right. that. Uh, I like doing it for, if you know, if you're underdeveloped on one side and you say one muscles, which can happen and then mm -hmm. it's pretty, it's pretty common. Then you can bring it up to, so the measurements are exactly the same. And that takes a little bit of time, but that's when I would use it um, just to, to right. make things more even. I don't like it for, you know, all the time. <clears throat> now, are there other ways to train individual limbs for effectiveness? Yeah. And that's also what I wanted to bring up. So okay. if you're, if you're somebody that's um, trying to increase your intensity, trying to work on your form, uh, mm. But you want to, you know, up your game by get the intensity higher. Instead of doing one limb at a time, hold the weight, the resistance, whichever you're using, in the contracted position, and then move one limb at a time. Okay. Why? Because when you're in the contracted position, you're not going to be able to rest. The muscles right. contracted, right. and then you work the one side and bring it up back into the contracted position, and then you work the other side. You will notice. Quick fatigue, and I love this. It's called alternate training. Okay. Well, I hold it in a contracted position. You know, it's great for for biceps training or machine training for your chest and back and things like that because you're you're always contracted and you're going to stretch the muscle and then back in the contracted position. So alternates, I think, are the a better way to go. Uh, okay. Much more effective. They're much more difficult. Um, and then the other one would be isotension. With isotension. You're, I'm going to kind of do a demonstration, but you're going to move your limbs back and forth. So if I'm doing a chest press, okay, I'm not stopping, I'm going to full range of motion, but I'm continuous tension moving back and forth. That's another great way to really fatigue the muscles. 
Uh, and then once you start to fatigue, then you can bring the weights all the way down and then press up at the same time to see if there's anything left. I think that's gotcha. a great technique to use. And I use that a lot myself. And I also use isotension in combination of, you know, regular full range reps, et cetera. Then, you know, what you want to understand is when you do things this way, I think what they're looking to do is, is to get a different feel. This will be right, a right. different feel. So you will fatigue the muscle very rapidly, which again, saves you time. And your, your intensity is going to automatically go up. And I love that kind of training. I prefer that over just working one single limb at a time. <laughs> right. Right. Are there certain, well, are there certain body parts that are easier to do this with than others? Well, it really, it really depends on the equipment you have to work with. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're using dumbbells, you know, when it comes to upper body, yeah, you could do, you know, single arm with the shoulder press, right. the chest press and rows and things like that. Uh, if you're using machines and the machine allows you to do that, then yes, uh, you can work a lot of different body parts with that. Uh, but like on a leg press, sometimes you can't because you got to put your leg in a position so it's out of the way. And depending on how deep you come down with that, you may not have enough room. So then you have to look at something that would be more individual for there. Right. <clears throat> so right. uh, to me, upper body is pretty easy to do with it. Um, legs can be a little more difficult because of the kind of equipment. You're doing one-legged squats. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't recommend that because you're going to, you know, lunge is different. So if you're doing lunges, that that's a different way of doing it. But I don't recommend like, you know, one-legged squats or one-legged deadlifts and things like that. So um, they have to be exercises that allow to use a single limb in a, in a good, safe manner. So that's the other thing okay. you got to keep in mind when you're doing it. So cables are usually pretty popular for that too. Mm -hmm. Wow, a lot of good information, Armin. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, so if you're wanting to do single limb work, just understand mm -hmm. that it's better to do it at the end of your workout, okay, so like if I'm going to do, you know, concentration curls, which is a really mm -hmm. good single limb exercise, I just do that at the end. And when you do them, don't take a break. When you do the one, say, my left side is my weak side. So I start with my left side, I'm going to take that to failure. So whatever rep set is, let's say I finish up with 10 on my left side, then I'm going to do the right side and I'm going to do no more than 10, even though I may be stronger because that's, right. that's my stronger side, but then I'm not going to take a break. I'm going to go right back to the left side and keep going. This is what helps save you time. If you're going to do single limb work, don't take breaks and rest, keep pushing yourself and keep just go from one side to the other side until you're going to do whatever amount of sets that you plan on doing. All right. That, I really strongly recommend that. Do it as a change up. So it's a good thing to, you know, to change up the things that you're doing. Um, and then when you're, when you're doing them, if you do, like I talked about with the alternate and the isotension, it really will cause you to focus more because you got to mm -hmm. hold that weight. You got to move the weight on the other side. So that right. increases your intensity naturally. And it, it really helps with developing your strength. I, I thought it was really a, a great way to go. But mm -hmm. I rarely, I rarely see people do it in the gym, which is ama amazing to me. They'll do mm -hmm. these single limb, these single limb, single limb movements and switch back and forth. But they're really not going to get that much from it because you can't use, uh, in most of these cases, they're not using very heavy weight. So that's another uh, challenge that I feel that people don't, they're not, they're not aware of. And so in my right, opinion, right. most of the people I see doing these single limb movements, they're, in my opinion, what I'm seeing in the gym, they're wasting their time. They'd be better off using both limbs and moving heavier weight in a more controlled manner with good proper form. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, if they want to do some single leg, single leg exercises, <clears throat> then do those, but I wouldn't do a lot of them. I mean, right. Because right. you're not going to, in most cases, they're not going to use much weight because they're, again, the way they're doing it. Hopefully that isn't too confusing with people, but, um, you know, what we're trying to explain here, but it, uh, when, I, when you see people doing a cable and they're just doing a one arm push down, uh, in my opinion, they're not going to get a whole lot out of that. <laughs> well, the bottom line is you want to maximize the work or excuse me, you want to maximize the results for the work that you put in. Nobody yeah. wants to go and work out and not see results, right? Yeah. Now, again, if you're doing rehab, then I think it's something that is good to focus on until that, mm -hmm. that limb gets back up to speed. 
but yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't use it if you're looking to put on good quality muscle mass. I just don't think it, it's a real, it's one of the better ways to go because I've done a lot of it. Um, but if you use the other techniques where you're in a contracted position and you're doing a single mm -hmm. limb, I think that's really effective. So that's what we yeah. want to kind of highlight today. Absolutely. Well, Armin, a lot of great information. Uh, hey, just a quick word. I want to let everybody know the feedback that we're getting through the NSP Nutrition Show. We really appreciate it. Also, it's translating over to Frank Mills Reality Fitness, our other podcast and YouTube show. Yeah. We're getting some additional watchers and listeners, so we appreciate your help and uh, appreciate you joining Arm and I for our other show. So thank you very much for that. We do appreciate it. And stand by for a quick word from NSP Nutrition. Armin and I will be right back. <music> Welcome back to the NSP Nutrition Show. I'm Armin Echelbarger. And I'm Frank Mills, and we appreciate you joining us for the second half of the show here. Vince's lacto-vegetarian diet. You know, I always like when we do the Vince diet uh, segments, Armin, because uh, I'm always learning a lot and overwhelmed by some of the quantity of things, like the eggs, right? But um, oh, yeah. let's get into this vac. Let's get into Vince's lacto-vegetarian diet. Uh, what's important to know about this diet, Armin? Well, like Vince felt it was a, a pretty easy diet, diet to follow. Okay. Uh, because you, you can eat as much as you want, in his opinion, just because of the way it's designed. And so he liked to use it for obese people who are really struggling to lose weight or body fat. Right. Um, and then with that, he also felt it was a, a really uh, great way to break a rut. Uh, you know, if you're not making gains, to change up, change up the nutrition to just to, uh, you know, help with the digestive tract as well. It also helps with mm -hmm. the digestive tract. <clears throat> okay. Lacto-vegetarian. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, what's this diet composed of then? You know, I'm kind of a little leery of this. So go ahead. Fire away. Well, like, like it talks about, it's, you know, it's got a lot of vegetables in it. So you're going to have non concentrated carbs so there's no starchy carbs okay uh, and and then with it to keep it simple you know vince knowing him he whips in his special protein drink which we've talked about the multiple right with the, <laughs> you know the 12 eggs etc and we'll have right, that right and then you know he always has supplements so absolutely that, that's what it's composed of so it's it's kind of simple but at the same time it, you got to buy a lot of vegetables right right all right, so let's get into breakfast here. Um, can you give us an example of what a breakfast would be for this diet? Yeah, so just like with anything with Vince, uh, he's going to use the special protein drink. So mm -hmm. yeah, you want to make sure you get your protein. So you're not going to lack protein on this diet, which is another nice feature. So you, you do the 12 eggs or 12 ounces, a half and a half, the 12, 12 raw fertile eggs or raw eggs, depending on what you're able to get. Okay. One third a half, one third a half a cup of the protein powder, uh, the milk and egg protein powder, a banana, and then he would have you make up three of these, so you could sip them in between meals. But you just start with uh, whatever you want to have for breakfast. You start sipping one, and go from right. there. Right. And then you had had the supplements followed up after you got done. And if anybody thinks that adding eggs doesn't fill you up in your protein shake, I started doing it. It works. It works. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. I've done it. I, and I really don't taste any difference. It's the texture. It's a thicker shake now, right? That's what's kind of amazing about it. It's It tastes fine. You don't even yeah. notice anything regarding no. the egg part of it. And uh, it does fill you up. I mean, I've done the 12 egg in one round, and I'm good till like, you know, one or two <laughs> o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm not hungry. Right. Right. With this formula, you're not going to be hungry. Uh, no, so you will not you be hungry. If, if, if you drank the whole thing. But if you're right, sipping it, that's right. probably a little different. Right, right. 
Well, it does work. I just wanted to toss that in there. Okay, so Armin, what about lunch? All right, so this is where you got to take all these different vegetables. So right, it's, a, it's right. a raw mixed vegetable salad. So these okay. things are just he like Vince like things in the raw steak, and so you can you slice up an avocado, put it in there, some bean sprouts, beets, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower heads, celery, cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, green peppers, hard boiled eggs. You know, eggs are fine with this diet as far as he was concerned mm-hmm. obviously some, some lettuce mushrooms parsley spinach you know chopped garlic or garlic powder um and then you know some water chestnuts watercress zucchini or squash there was really it just depend on your palate that you would put in your salad it's and wide open you got that all yeah yeah and once you got that all put together there's no starchy carbs it's all fiber and uh, and, you know, you're, you have some carbs there. You uh-huh. toss and serve that with some olive oil, vinegar, and then he like uses some chopped garlic or garlic oh, powder yeah. to flavor it. So you don't have, uh, there's no salt, no sugar. Uh, so straight up, and that's your, you can eat all you want. Of course, if you're eating that, you're going to get filled up pretty quick with all the fiber. Absolutely. And, and, and then you do the supplements, uh, the same as breakfast, which we'll talk about the supplements in a little bit. But then he added in one iron tablet uh for the uh, lunch so okay all right well that seems like a lot for lunch and you're going to be really full but by the time you get to dinner time boy i can't even imagine here what did vince have in mind for dinner on this diet same thing (laughs) oh boy oh boy so you had two salads as your main course then you have your you got it again you're sipping your egg protein drink and, but he did throw in one extra thing. He let you have some fruit on top of it for your dinner. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> a lot of this is really amazing. It, it's, it, boy, it's a lot of vegetables too. So yeah, <laughs> that it's a vegetarian diet. I, yeah, I get that. But yeah. um, most of the protein came from the protein drink then. Uh, yeah. But all right. So what was in the supplement protocol? Cause I'm always curious about that. You know, everybody should know NSP Nutrition was his company. He came up yeah. with the supplements, right, Armin? Yeah, I mean, because he he, uh, he did a lot of research and he, he wanted to learn how to get more, give a, a you know an athlete a better advantage. And so he knew nutrition would go so far. Uh, but as you've learned, you can enhance it to some degree with supplementation. Mm-hmm. Vince was a big fan of it. And uh, so he experimented with it. And that's why, because, you know, he felt like it made a difference. I, I would say that they make a difference, but everybody has an opinion on supplements and I understand that. But well, uh, I, I agree. I think they do make a difference, but, uh, all right. So getting back to the diet, did he have a supplement type of a regimen for this diet? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, amazingly enough, there, yeah, all of his diets has a little bit different twist to the supplement line, which hmm. I found kind of interesting as well. Okay. Uh, this one here, you know, he had the multivitamin, which he has in all of them, but then he had three vitamin B complex, which is a little bit different than the other diets we talked about. Okay. He would have you take uh, 500 milligrams of C complex, vitamin C complex, which had bioflavonoids and some other components to it. One vitamin B12. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with B12, you get B12 from meat. That's where it really mm-hmm. comes from. Another name for it would be cobalamin is another name for it. But because you're not oh getting the amount okay. of meat, I mean, you're getting eggs, which will have some B12, but because you're not getting the amount of meat he has in his other diets, he felt like adding the B-complex was a good, safe way to make sure you're getting what you need. So, and if you're not familiar with how B12 works, it, you know, it keeps your body's uh, blood and nerve cells healthy and it helps make DNA. Uh, and it's also the genetic, which is a genet- genetic material made by your cell. So it helps to recycle amino acids. <clears throat> so you have mm-hmm. protein synthesis going on. So you had to do that. Then you have you do one vitamin B15, also known as um, pangamic acid. And hmm. if you're not familiar okay. with that, if you're not really familiar with it, it's, it's, um, it's also been used as a drug in the, in the past too, but um, it's, supposed to help with uh, heart disease, the aging process, diabetes, gangrene, uh, hypertension, glaucoma, alcoholism. So they had a lot of things they've used it for. I mean, 
hepatitis, jaundice, allergies, dermatitis. So this vitamin B B fifteen, Bids felt was a pretty important ingredient to the whole thing. So mm-hmm. he, he had that put in there, and then after that, he had to do the chelated mineral tablet, which we talked about before, because uh, that helps us support normal growth, stabilizing, um, you know, building strong muscles and bones, uh, and then improving the immune system to function. So you have overall good health which we talked about before. Then you had three lysine tablets, again, that helps promote healing, which is important because you're training. Mm-hmm. And then three multi-glandular tablets. Now, he used a different product for this. It's called Nucleogland, and it'll be for a male or a female, depending on who he's doing the diet for. Okay. So I, mean, I don't think you can even find those anywhere, but that's what he was using at the time. The NSP has the has their own product for that, the hormone optimizer. <clears throat> well, that sounds like a whole lot, but knowing Vince, he probably had some more to go with this. Uh, am I right? Yeah. Well, on top of that, <laughs> then, you know, you know, yeah, he always has your after, your in between for your working out and mm-hmm. stuff. So, you know, he recommended five amino acid tablets or one ounce of liquid amino every three hours. Again, to keep the nitrogen, positive nitrogen balance going, even though you're having the eggs throughout the day, you're sipping it. Then before and after you train, you'd have the four raw orchid tab- tissue tablets, uh, one vitamin C complex, and one niacin um, before and after the workouts. And then before you go into bed, you would do five to 10 grams of arginine ornithine, along with three to five grams of tryptophan and six calcium tablets. So... As usual, you always have that other mix to go with it. Wow. Okay. Wasn't it, you know, and that's the thing about Vince during these days is he was on top of these kind of things, and nobody else would even know what to do with this or even have a clue, in my opinion. So he was way ahead of his time on it. Very well thought out and calculated out all of his diets, it seems like to me. Oh, yeah. uh, really interesting. But, you know, Armin, one question I have is since there was you know eggs and some dairy what why would this be called a lacto vegetarian diet i mean i I know we talked about the vegetables too but is there a reason for that well yeah it's it was put together again i don't know who 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 the person would decide to call what it is but right it was also known as a lacto ovo vegetarian diet so that's why you call okay. it yeah, lacto ovo ovo. Ovo, okay. Yeah. So that was, you know, the, one of the original terms for having vegetables, vegetables or vegetarian lifestyle, but you could have the egg and some milk products, not all, but just some milk products to go with it. So the half and half was one of those that he had used. I don't know. I just find it very interesting how, how he has all these different diets, uh, Oh, yeah. You know, for all, right? I mean, it's pretty cool how he came up with all these different diets for different situations to do different things. Uh, it, you know, he truly seems to be like the master of how to get the excellent results, not only on the physical side, but on the nutrition side. He he seems yeah. to be all over it, man. Well, he had to work with a lot of different types of people, and so mm-hmm. he. You know what he did for each person that they worked with him on a one-on-one. He he designed a diet specifically for them, uh, based on what they wanted to do and based on what he knew about them. Now, this day and age, you know, if you have lab work done, you right. can also dial things even further. He didn't even have that capacity, as far as I know. So right, right. yeah, he was very uh, spot on with how to make sure people are getting the right kind of nutrition and what they need to do based on their activity level, based on their lifestyle, things like that. So. But he had these cornerstone diets that he designed that a lot of people could use so that um, it was real simple for them if they, if they had an interest in uh, whatever the particular goal was, you know, losing body fat, just maintaining mm-hmm. or, you know, something where they're just they're more vegetarian based. So he had it. He came up with all of them. Well, and the good thing, too, is all of these diets and all these plans, if you're interested in any of them. You can get them right on the NSP Nutrition website. Uh, they're available there for you if you're interested in trying them out. But, you know, Armin, as we wrap things up here, any final thoughts on the lacto-vegetarian diet? Yeah, so like all these different diets we're talking about, 
uh, you can find a majority of them in the wild physique. So if you like some of this information and you're really curious, and you want to execute these exact diets, you can get them in the wild physique, which is on okay. the website. So that's very really nice interesting feature there. Hmm. But other than that, uh, you know, this, these diets can be a good change up, especially getting bored with the, the current strategy you're doing. And it can help with, you know, clearing out the mucus out of the gut and things like that, especially with a lack of vegetarian diet. Because if you eat a lot of steak and other heavy meats, you can tend to get some mucus build up. So this is one of the things that Vince would do to, you know, break that down and, and to clear out the system. Hmm. So, and he, he talk, they talk about that in, in the books and stuff about, you know, different ways you can do it and then go back to another diet or, you know, go, go to the advanced maintenance diet. I mean, again, it just depends on where you're at with your lifestyle and your training uh, and just plug that hole and then keep changing it up. Wow. Well, a lot of great information, Armin, as always. Uh, I'm sure everyone appreciates it. And uh, thanks again for what you do, man. Again, looking forward to doing the show again next week. And uh, again, give us other ideas or things that you feel are important or you have questions about. Uh, maybe I could put a show together just based on that. Uh, but we need people's input to make sure we're giving you information that you really want to hear. <laughs> Absolutely. And the best way to do that, if you want to write us an email, you can contact NSP Nutrition and they'll get us the information. You can email them at support at nspnutrition.com. We'll get the info. Easy way, if you're watching the YouTube, Joe, just put it in the comment section down below. Armin yeah. will be checking that. He'll respond to you too, by the way. And, uh, we look forward to your input, your questions, any topics you'd like us to cover. We'd be glad to do so. Um, you know, we do appreciate what NSP is allowing us to do, but we also appreciate the quality of the supplements that they offer. And yeah. I highly recommend to you, if this is the first show that you've ever watched for NSP Nutrition Show, um, I encourage you to go to NSP Nutrition check out their multivitamin check out something give it a shot yeah i'm telling you it's life-changing you won't be disappointed by the quality of the product right armin yeah i mean they're they're soundly made and that's why i like them as well because i don't waste my time and my dollars either so well all quality all natural and that's what attracted me so mm -hmm. I'm sure that uh, you'll be happy with the product. Uh, I just can encourage you to try. But we appreciate you. We thank you for joining in Armin and I for this episode. And join us next week for a brand new episode of the NSP Nutrition Show. Hey, thanks for checking out the NSP show. Go to nspnutrition.com where you can find a whole heap of resources to help you achieve stunning definition and eye-popping levels of muscularity. Don't forget you can save 10% on your first order by using the code NSP show at the checkout. Catch you next time.